roll to your stomach. Place both hands by your head for a moment. And take a moment and again notice if you were to roll to your back, which way would you roll? How does the floor speak to you? And how do you how would you organize rolling yourself as if to roll to your back? Is, would it be easier for you to roll over one side of your chest than the other? Would it, one side of your ribs be more available? What will you do with the arm? Will you move it be, below you and around and under you? Will you take it over the top of you? What will you do? How would you roll yourself from being on your stomach to rolling yourself to your back? And take a moment and just notice that there's some way in which there's a pattern of pressure that you that you seem to know really well and it the pattern of pressure in some ways informs you as to which way it's easier for you to turn your head yeah, and you notice how it is that your chest rests on the floor take a moment and notice where your chin rests or where your cheek rests or the side of your head and notice where you touch You take a moment and notice for yourself where your heels are. The relationship of your, whether your heels are to the outside or to the inside. And take a moment. and begin to turn your head to the other side and notice the very first moment that you begin to turn your head to the other side where you find the support where you find the floor to give you the ability to lift and so that you can sense the weight of your head and i'm sure that you guys have had lessons where you're lying on your stomach and you come to lift your head and it says you go into the lesson you find that it becomes your head becomes lighter and more more able to turn and lift from one side to the other but now please turn and bring your head to the other side and listen to where your face rests on the floor and notice it's an interesting to notice go back to the original side and notice where you have more weight on your on your pelvis whether you have more weight on the right side of your pelvis or your left which hip joint seems to be more connected to the floor? Is one knee bent and drawn up to you a little bit more? In other words, how did you come to this, to be in this position? And then watch as you turn your head to the other side and watch very carefully whether your pelvis actually changes where the pressure is or whether it stays the same. Some of you, you'll find that the movement takes place perhaps only in your neck or does it really take place in the way that you change if you were to really make the movement so that the movement went down the length of your spine and so that you spread the whole movement down your whole spine then of course there would be a change with on your knees the tops of your feet the where your pelvis is where your sacrum is there'd be some kind of change from one side to the other but maybe it's not there so now for the moment please Lie with your head in the direction that's the easiest for you. Whichever that is. And then please take the arm that's behind, place it behind. And place the arm that's in front of you in the push-up position so that there's a, a gap. So it's like the whole question of the head under the gap kind of thing. And of course, you probably have had lessons like this as well. Now, for the moment, please, for the moment, please begin to draw. If your head is to the right, it'll be your right knee. If it's to the left, it'll be your left knee. Begin to draw your knees. Roll your knee to the side a little bit and begin to draw it upward. And as you draw it upward, 
how early can you detect how this movement begins to change the shape of your lower back? Again, it's very, very interesting. If you start to, to pay attention to the shape of the movement, that as you draw your leg up, the way that you turn your pelvis, the way that your knee begins to engage with the floor, where it is that you find your heel, the way that you make this movement, the initial movement, yeah. And as you make this movement, the very first moment that you make this movement, please begin to sense that as you make this movement and as you make the movement with your, with your knee drawing up and the sensation of what happens with your lower back, how early can you detect in what direction would your head move? The moment you make this movement, you can begin to sense something very, very interesting. We've played with this now. We're beginning to get the idea that there's a relationship between the lower back, your lower back, and the direction that your head moves more easily. In general, these are generalities. They're, 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 they're things you see in a large group of people but not necessarily. People will have their own specific needs, and as we learn to watch, then we watch the, speci the, sp the specific things that we see. Yeah. So as you make the movement to bring your leg up, it's all, well, you don't have to bring it up far, it's just, just a little bit. We, the, moment, the moment that you begin to bring your leg up, do you have the sense as to whether it'd be easy for you to lift your head and look to see the wall above you? Or do you have the sense that it would be easier for you to, to turn your head under the gap so that your head and your knee could come towards each other? What's the immediate sense that as this movement begins to unfold, as the, the entire organization of the movement begins to unfold, what's your sense of how this movement can unfold? Some of you, if I said to you, bring your knee up and bring your knee and your head to your, to your knee, you would say, that doesn't make sense. And yet others of you are going, he's teaching the lesson just for me. This is just, this lesson is for me. Huh? I've got it. I've got it right. Yeah. Okay. So now I'll leave that for a moment. Leave it for a moment. See, Moshe had a way of overriding these, these patterns in the long run, in the end of the lesson. Please turn your head now to the other side. So the other arm is behind you. You place your other hand in the push-up position. So in whatever way it is that you make this movement where you place your hand. It, 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 it's, it, your hand is not under your back. It's just along your side. That's it. And please now begin to make the movement of turning your leg and beginning to draw your leg up on this side. And it's so profoundly interesting if you, again, sit and watch this and you watch the way that people organize this. Yeah. that there's something very, very different about the way that people make a purchase as to where their knee touches the floor and how this, the weight of their leg and the way that they bring this whole movement to being, to bear. Yeah. So come around for a moment. You, you stay right here. You, you stay right there. You stay there. You, you're, you know that you're a good example. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so come around for a moment. Turn your head to the right. There you go. So now place your right hand in the push-up position. That's it. And so as she begins to roll her right leg, where does her head go immediately? Go ahead, keep rolling your leg up. Where does her head go? Immediately goes forward and down, doesn't it? 
immediately there's something about the shape of her movement that makes it so that that this movement invites her to go forward and down. She would be happy to have the lesson in such a way that you bring your head and your knee together on the side, wouldn't she? So if I said to her, make the, begin to make the movement, come back again to the beginning, and as you make the movement, bring your head and your knee together. So as you make the movement, you bring your head and your knee together, and you can see that there's something about the way that her pelvis rolls and the shape of her back that makes it so that she can curve her back and such, so that her head and her knee can more or less come together. It's not quite so smooth. Her knee gets caught on the, on the rug and everything, but for the most part, you can see that there's a roundness to the shape of her back, isn't there? Yeah? Okay, so now let's watch what she does on the other side. So when she starts to make this move, put your hand in the push-up position. Put your hand in the push-up position. Come back again. That's right. But what? Watch. Yeah. What is it that's inviting her head to come back? And then if, if if she came back, it would come up. But now look at the shape of her back. Yeah. What is it? How is it that her back now has such an arch, and you can see the tilt of her sacrum, and you can see then that this puts a pressure somewhere in her ribs in such a way that there's no way in the world that she's going to have the sense that of taking her knee and her head together, is she? The initial neurological imprint on this side. Yeah, so start again. Start the movement again. That's it from there. Just pr put your hand in the push-up position. Bring your elbow up. That's it. Lift it up. That's it. Now you watch. Just, no, no. Put, just turn your head to the right. That's it. Leave your head there to the left. Now you just begin to make the movement. And watch right there. Watch what happened to the shape of her back. As their back tonifies, doesn't that begin to tonify all the way along the, the spine? The spine, yeah. Now, of course, we can see people make that movement and turn their head the other way, and that tells you other things, yeah. But you can see that there's something inherent in the way that the shape of the movement. And as we go through this, we'll look at this a little bit further. Okay. Do you want to go watch? Go watch several people form little groups and just watch the initial the initial part, and see if you can't discern for yourself what is it specifically about the way that they're. What the, the change in the direction of how their lower back becomes organized. Just sit and watch for a moment. Just watch the first, the first moment of the, 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 the first moment it begins. Let's just watch a couple more. You. Yeah. We'll see if you keep doing what you were doing. It's, it'll be interesting to see. Now, You can, you can bring your, your arm down. That, that, that's it. So there's something about how the initial movement makes it so when he begins to roll that he has a, an availability with his lower back and his spine to keep rounding. And if you watch really carefully, his leg is almost a, a weight that's drawn up. He's not engaging his leg in the process of, of lifting. And you watch where he turns to on his knee, where he turns, how far he goes, because at this point in time, you could see that if you ask him at any point in time from here to drive himself upward, there's no, no point on his knee that he finds that he could push himself upward on. Yeah? pushing himself upward, he would have to rearrange himself. Yeah? Okay, so we, we, we watch for a moment and change to the other side just for a moment. And we watch. Now, look at the degree to which his knee was involved in that movement. And where did he, where did he look? He's, he's already put himself in the place that he's ready to crawl. He made it, he made it, that's right, he made that, but he also made something else. Because, but if we watch this first, this first movement, watch. Right there, oh, that's, that's far enough. Don't, don't go further, just watch this first movement. And the degree to which his knee comes up and into his pelvis. Now his knee has a point that if I hold his knee, that's right, he has a point of contact that he can use 
to take himself upward. Yes? If I gave him this, and I held him here with his knee there, he's all set. This movement will unfold and drive him upward. Yeah? So he's ready now to make this movement in such a way that this would lead to him lifting his head. Yeah? That's clear? Not clear? Huh? Yeah. Okay, so now come to the other side again, just for a moment. It, 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 it's subtle for, for us. But you can see that he's initiated this movement as he did it before. We'll see if he does it now. But you see, he started this, didn't he? His leg, leg comes afterwards, doesn't it? And his leg, at no point in time do you see his leg come into his pelvis in such a way that he's organized as if he's going to push himself upwards. That's right. There's no point in time in the movement that his leg provides in that. His leg has, in essence, rotated outward. And so he's taken it out a distance around himself. Yeah. Which is great, because what does it does? It gives him the whole ability exactly to do that. It gives him the whole ability for his... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> It gives him the whole ability for his sacrum and his low back to round so that he can round across the entire internal curve and distribute the curve within himself so he has the greatest ability to round himself. Yes? All right. Now we can see that if we give him the message to do this and to bring this up in this place, oh, excuse me, let's go to the other side just for a moment. And we bring this up into this place, and he has this tone in his back, and then we ask him to bring his head and his knee together. How can he bring his head and his knee together? There's a long time. He can, but he has to rearrange himself partway through. The initial movement isn't, he's, he's got a conflict in the, in the initial movement. Yeah? So go ahead. That's right. Now, he can change this, obviously, because he can start the movement there and he can then he's changed to where his leg is okay so now let's watch a couple others just for the fun of it let's watch you go ahead and find the mat here okay if it's okay yeah because you're you're more subtle in your in your in, in how you in how you do and don't don't do So let's just go ahead and watch this one. Now, right there. She's trying to bring her head through, forward. But does the shape of her back allow it? Not really, does it? You can see that the tone in her back is, is such that it's not going to be easy for her to bring her head through. Yeah? Now she has to really work. And she still hasn't changed. Now she's finally beginning to change the curvature of her lower back. So it becomes a question of how she's going to time when she's going to bring the different elements of her back into play. Now let's watch what she does on the other side. This one, to me, she is more capable, as she makes this movement, of having this movement round earlier. Yeah. It's a question, again, of the timing as to how, how the person puts together the movement. She's stuck on the mat, so she's not moving quite the same as she was moving over there. But go ahead and make the movement again. Yeah, on the side. That's right. This whole thing basically rolls across her. Now she has that whole potential. And then you can see the potential in here for her whole spine to begin to around yeah okay so we we watch and she starts this movement no no this side the right to the right and you watch as she makes the movement right there didn't her knee find the floor didn't she find the floor as if she had to she could crawl from there she found for the moment as she made the movement that she found purchase she did not go there. Yeah? Now it would be easy for her from there 
to roll her roll herself and to roll herself and bring bring your head and your knee together. Bring your head. That's easy if you're out there like that. Okay. Yes. No. Yeah. No, I understand that. But we're looking. We're looking at the subtlety of the movement, the timing, the things that. That, that's inherent in all the movements that are hidden in the very first times that we start these movements that we really don't know, haven't historically known how to listen to. We just go through the lessons. But we don't know within the lessons how the initial way that I organize the movement determines the quality of the movement for myself. And I, I get to have the effect of the lesson because we'll go through the lesson now and you can play with it. And then you'll see how Moshe makes it so that whether you want it or not, you'll be, you'll be the same on each side. I was intentionally overriding my habit. Yeah. And I realized it because if I went, I really went, okay, so let my neck just do whatever it wants to do. No, it wants to go back. Yeah. Yeah. But the language of the lesson, you know, you know, I, my, you know, all my history of these lessons, oh, it's strength thing, lock me, well, and my hands here. So, you know, and you said, yeah. you've probably done these lessons where you've looked under your arm. Right. All this stuff starts going in my head. So, yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. yeah. And and it is, it is it is interesting for us to start to understand how to capture the initial intention that, that we have within ourselves. Yeah, it, it, it's it, it's it's in the in the knowing specifically knowing of how you make the first organization that you actually then can go. Well, how about this? Well, I could do this. Well, yeah. But you, but even this thing of just the, the, that that moment in which the person's knee comes to the floor in such a way that it's available to per perform an activity as opposed to gliding up, but it has no real capability from which to create the process of moving in, in a direction. Those are two different movements altogether. Yeah. Right. We need to have both. We have the two hemispheres of our brain, and unfortunately we do, because it means that all of the activities that our brain performs on the left and the right side means that we can be a whole human being, and the asymmetry is, is necessary. Oftentimes people that are, that are ambidextrous have a, a moment in which they're actually in danger if they're in a, in a moment of crisis because they can't decide which way to go. There's a momentary pause. Right or left. There isn't the default. Whereas anybody else who has this asymmetry has a default that they that, 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 that's reliable. Yeah. Right. So with that little bit of information that you saw, go back and watch again. So you see another another layer of looking. And please, the person, the person that's making the crawling movement, <laughs> just, it's probably better to just do them one at a time, just. Because people, people can be very subtle with this. It can be very subtle. But if you watch how the leg turns and you watch the direction that the pelvis initiates and you see whether the leg creates a condition or a, a point of purchase, some way in which the leg is drawn up and into the pelvis and it begins to change the lower back. And then if you just leave it that far, that's enough. You can see now the shape of her back. It's going to be hard for her head to come through. Yeah. So you just you're just looking. It's not it's not to bring your head and foot together. You're just looking at what, how the person initiates the movement, how their leg turns, where they find the point of resting, the way that they roll their pelvis. And 
I can actually feel if I'm like, if I don't try and deliberately push out, if I head down to the do that a little bit. So you don't want to deliberately push it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a moment of intention. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what, when do you decide then to deliberately push it? What's happening? Where are you in the process? Well, that's if I don't. That's if I don't. That's if I don't. <laughs> if I just you watch the direction the pelvis begins to roll, you watch the way, whether they draw their knee up and into them, or whether they spiral out and around. You watch the immediate availability for their back to either round, deeply round from below, and the degree to which the whole of their spine can round as a result of it, or whether there's a moment that makes it so that the low back arches in such a way that it pre creates another condition. That's a, he's giving a demonstration of another kind of crawling, which is yeah. 